Welcome back to MVM. Today we're going to be taking a look at the game Robotopia, which is coming to Kickstarter soon. Now, the name of the game implies a robot utopia. Great, happy robot world where all the robots are working together. Sure, that's what the master robot wants you to believe. This game is about uniting all of the different robot guilds to unite together and overthrow the master robot who is kind of the evil overlord of this game. So there is a whole element of a race to this game trying to be the first player to unite all four guilds. And those four guilds are presented out on this board. They're divided by color, yellow, red, green, and blue. Each of these different guilds gives you a different kind of robot that's going to be used in a worker placement style game. But the worker placement here has some cool twists that I'll talk about. The first thing I wanna say before I get started with Robotopia is that this is a complete prototype. Nothing you see here is final. I don't know what the final uh, workers and scrap cubes are going to look like. They'll have different symbols that represent them. But I'm using little wooden meeples of each of the individual colors. Now, each of these guilds does not represent a player color. These are the robots that you can basically hire to use. These workers never belong to you. You only ever get to use a worker once. Once it's out on the board, it's gone. Part of the game is constantly generating more of these workers to place out on the board spots. But before I explain how that works, let me talk about the board itself. Now, I have set it up here already, and you're gonna see the four different quadrants that represent the four different guilds. Each guild has three tiles that represent the actions you can take there. Plus, they each have a guild headquarters spot and a special guild action card. Now, these guild action cards are dealt out randomly. There are five for each guild, but I used the recommended starting setup, which is marked with a little star to make the game a little easier for your first time. But when you play again and again, you'll be using random guild cards and you're gonna have a different combination of guild abilities. Each player is gonna start with an influence token on one of these different guilds to start the game with. And that is determined by a starting setup card. Each player is going to be dealt three of these. I've already chosen and taken everything I'd get off this card. But some of the things that you're gonna get are different colored cubes, which represent scrap, different colored meeples, which represent the different robots, and different kinds of generators and batteries. These generators are going to create robots over the course of the game, and these batteries are gonna power the generators, so you wanna have both. Each of these cards also tells you which guild you're going to start with your influence on. The goal of the game is to get influence with all four guilds, so you do start with one already, and that gives you access to that guild's special power. So each player is gonna start with one of the guild's powers. You can potentially have multiple players with influence in the same guild at the start of the game. This game can play up to five players. Each player is gonna be given a player board with a different shaped symbol. There's squares and triangles and circles, hexagons. That's gonna represent your influence. Now these workers are gonna help you play the game. The scrap is gonna help you spend for different actions. And then you're going to have one action card per player. These action cards are going to trigger off of doing something specific during the game. When you take whatever actions listed here, you're going to get some kind of bonus. So this encourages you to go out and do something a little different. Now the rest of the board is already set up as well. You have this conveyor belt at the top, which is randomly set. You have these four different tiles out at the bottom that represent costs you have to pay. Again, you can do these randomly. There's a whole stack, or you can use the star ones, which I use for the start of the game. Now, each one of these four guilds operates a bit differently. They all have their different goals. You'll come to these guilds for different things, but you'll also want to come to these guilds to use their tiles. And like I said, these are set out randomly, so you don't know which guild you're going to actually get access to. Now, these workers that you can get, these robots, go up in a cascading order. Yellow robots are the bottom of the totem pole, and then you have your reds, your blues, and your greens. The reason that they're better is because of the placement restrictions. The yellow workers can place on any space in the game. You're going to place on any one of these potential worker placement tiles, or you're going to place in the guild headquarters to work with that guild directly. And each of the guilds has its own colored headquarters. The action spaces are going to do the same things that you kind of expect from a worker placement game. They're going to allow you to gain the resources that you'd gain, those scrap tokens, those generators, the batteries. And you'll see some that are going to let you trade in. You can upgrade some of your scrap to better scrap. You can grab specific types of generators that are going to let you generate those better workers. So you can go to any one of these spots. Now, the unique thing here is that the red workers, they can go on any line between two spaces. So a red worker could go in between two tiles and trigger both of them. That also includes going in between 
the guild headquarters and one tile. So you get to do one action tile and still work with that guild. So those red workers are pretty good. The blue workers are even better. They're going to go at the intersection of three tiles and they're going to activate all three tiles. Or again, you can put them at the intersection of two tiles and one of the guilds to both take the two actions and interact with the guild. The green workers are wilds. They can do all of the above. However, you're mostly going to want to place them on intersections if possible because that's where you're going to get the most value. However, there are two caveats to this. Number one is that these workers stay out there. Once they're played, they're out. So you might get to a situation where you can't take the intersection that you want. You have to take one of those sides, the, the space between to take two actions instead because the intersection's already blocked. The other thing you can do is go where the master robot is. He's keeping an eye on you. So you cannot place in any space that's adjacent to him. So you cannot place at the intersection, the corners, or even the space itself. However, you can place on spaces next to him potentially that he's not actually actively touching or those intersections in the same zone so he pretty much just blocks off that space and all lines around that space one of the actions you can take in the game is actually going to move the master robot he's going to move around clockwise to a different guild and you get to decide which tile to block once he's placed he's going to scrap all the robots that were adjacent to that spot so if there was a yellow worker robot on his space he would destroy it upon landing there if there was a blue worker at the intersections adjacent he would destroy them, and so on and so forth. This robot will also move one other way. If on your turn, you have no robots left to place, you have to take a recharge action. This is going to generate all of the robots from all the different generators that you have, assuming that they're powered. Yellow and red generators require one battery, and you'll simply slot it there to show that it's powered. The blues and greens require two batteries. So you'll see here that you can potentially gain a lot of generators and a lot of batteries so that when you take your refresh action, you could gain a lot of different robots. You could gain potentially three or four different robots if you have enough batteries. Then you're going to move the master robot as if you took that master robot action and destroy everything that's adjacent to it, freeing up those spaces but still blocking one space. You have to do this. If you do not have any generators or you do not have the batteries to power them, you can always break glass in an emergency and use your emergency generator to generate one yellow robot. It's not the best thing to do, but it's possible that you'll be out of stuff. And there's a reason why. The reason you're gathering all of these different resources, generators, batteries, etc., is to spend them. Because remember, the goal of the game is to place those influence tokens, gain influence with the other guilds. You're going to do that by interacting with the individual guilds. So the worker placement spots are going to give you things. The guild spots are going to let you spend them. The left side of the board, red and yellow, are going to allow you to spend resources to gain tokens with that guild. You'll see here that every player is going to have set aside the remaining guild tokens in the yellow guild at the start of the game. Each one of these tokens is going to require a number of scrap in order to build. So the yellow token to take your yellow token would require six yellow scrap. So if I have six yellow scrap there, great. I can turn it in. I can take that six, which is actually also a battery. So I get one extra battery. I get to draw an action card and I get my particular token. So I'm the square player. So I would take my square yellow token out of the mix and place it on my player board. Now, I'm not actually gaining influence with the yellow guild at this point. I'm just getting their guild token to later turn back in. Up here with the red action, you're doing something similar, but you're looking at this conveyor belt at the top. And that's why that random conveyor belt is so important. You are spending everything it shows on that conveyor belt. So some number of cubes, potentially robots. Every time you go there, you're going to turn those things in and you're going to take a wild token of your shape. And this can be used in any of the guilds. You'll know again it's a square, so I'll place it on there. Now I've got a random wild one and a yellow one. I only need one more to potentially have access to all four guilds. But that's only half the battle. You'll have to actually place these as well. Now every time you utilize that conveyor belt, everything is going to shift down like it does and you'll notice that one conveyor belt piece is always going to be in the center here with a bright spotlight shining on it this is called the anvil space there are certain actions or cards in the game that are going to allow you to take whatever benefit happens to be in the center so if you have one of those cards that gains the anvil bonus you might want to wait and see if people are manipulating that conveyor belt in order to get the resource or the robot that you specifically want now putting out those gained influence discs is going to 
take place on the right side of the board, the green and the blue guild. You're going to come over to here, for example, the green guild, you're going to need to spend everything that's on the right side of that conveyor belt. You'll notice that there are four tiles on the right side and only three on the left. So you'll have to pay even more to place that token down. Now you can place that token in any of the guilds. It doesn't have to be in the green guild specifically, but for example, I got that yellow token earlier. I could come over here. I could pay all of the resources, including putting some robots back in the supply and potentially spending some of those hard earned batteries. I can do that to place this token anywhere. For example, I could place my square token down in yellow. Now I have the, both the red and the yellow guild and I have access to the yellow special ability as well as the red special ability. That's what happens in the green space. And now once you're done, of course, you're gonna keep rotating that conveyor belt. So what you need to spend and what you gain is always going to be different and changing over the course of the game. Now the last space is the blue space down here. This links to one of these four different tiles that you set out at the start of the game. And again, these are random, like I said, you've got a bunch more cost tiles and they could be swapped so that different guilds require different costs. You look at your particular guild that you're trying to make an alliance with. I have a wild token left, so I can choose any of the, the four. But remember, I already have yellow and red. So I need to look at what the green and blue require, and I'll need to spend that some number of different cubes, generators, batteries, robots, whatever. You're spending that to take your disc and place it again on any one. So I can place that on blue. Now I have three of the four. My race now is to get that green influence. So I got to go back to the left side of the board, find some way to get my green token or another wild token, and then come over here and spend it. All the while you're trying to avoid the master robot who's coming along and taking those spaces. And you're trying to constantly generate workers because as you can tell by now, once you're out of workers, you're out and you want to prolong your turns as long as possible. You don't want to take that recharge action too much because it's basically a dead turn. You can find ways to consistently generate new robots during the game by taking some of these action spaces out here or by potentially playing some of these action cards. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of extend your turn. The person that has taken the most actions is going to benefit, but it's not just about the most actions. It's also about the efficiency of those actions. The player that gets a lot of those green robots built is going to have a little bit easier time, but the person that has just a bunch of yellow robots probably hasn't invested as much into creating those robots because the yellows are easiest to create. So maybe they're getting to do more out on the actual board. So there's a whole balance that you have to keep here between all of these different strategies. So using these action cards becomes super important. You're going to see off to the side here, there's a row of three action cards that are always available. Anytime you would draw an action card from an effect or a reward, you can choose to take one of those face up ones. So there is some element of planning that you can do. If you see an action card out that is really useful to your strategy, you might want to consider going to one of those spaces and taking the action that's going to get you one of those cards before somebody else comes in and swoops in. Now, at the end of any round, once all the players have acted, you're going to check and see if anybody has completed all four guilds. It's possible that two players or three players even may have completed all four guilds at the same time, in which case everything you've done during the game scores. The player who's done the most stuff over the course of the game is going to win that tiebreaker. But usually, generally, one player is the one that completes all four and they're declared the winner. They have united all four guilds under their banner and now they're going to launch their uh, assault against Master Robot and free all their robot friends. So that is Robotopia. It is a worker placement game with a lot of interesting twists. So if you like fun worker placement games, especially games that are fairly easy to learn. This is not a complicated game to learn, but there is a lot of complicated depth to the strategy, which again is that balancing act I talked about. So you'll be able to find this game on Kickstarter, see what all the final components are gonna look like and everything that comes with the campaign. And as always, thank you so much for following us here at MVM. Please like, subscribe, follow. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Robotopia. And until I see you again, keep having fun at the table. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.